What's up guys? Good Sunday morning. Probably going to be my day of the week to start making some videos again, as always. Um, so I wanted to make this video addressing one of the most common questions uh, across the board. It's probably going to be my second or third video um, on this topic, and that is how to choose a niche. How to finally choose an industry, if, even if you're a complete beginner, um, to be able to point your finger like, okay, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to go full into this. And um, it's, it's it basically, you know, feel comfortable that it's going to, things are going to be in your favor, right? Okay, so the, the, I got, you know, I'm making this video. It's actually because of a really good question that came by from somebody who is looking to get into a, the dentist niche. niche. Um, and his, his dad is a dentist, right? So I told him right off the bat, right? That's a huge leg up, right? I mean, I'll get into why that is. But, you know, long story short, um, one of the biggest things you find out after you get into the industry is how that target market thinks right what kind of scale they have when they're making a certain amount of uh, revenue for their business what kind of products are they looking into when they're 10xing that what kind of other products are they looking into all this kind of stuff it's not really easy to find that data online right like you can't like just do freaking keyword research and find that if your dad if somebody who lives in your house is in that industry not only will you get all that but you know not to mention even connections and all that stuff. So it was pretty much a, a you know, huge thing to consider. So that led me to make this video once again, now that I know a few more things about you know, making an industry, and I actually took some notes. So this time maybe I can be a bit more congruent so you guys can follow what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, having that said, let's get into it. So first of all, let's um, look at these notes a bit. Side note, th this is one of the best note-taking tools ever. Like. Google, like who knew Google um, Docs has the voice typing thing, which is so responsive, right? Normally I was using Word Doc, and um, you know it, it sucks compared to this. Like if I had this all this time, I would be able to provide um, make so much more kind of content. So really good tool, check it out. Um, you, the pace I'm talking right now, you could probably talk in that pace, maybe a little slower, and it'll catch like every single word. So um, I've been actually taking some notes here for future videos that I'm going to be making probably next Sunday and Sunday before and stuff like that. And it allows me to actually rant, right? Like I could take my computer and when I'm in the mood to think, I actually have those phases. Like I walk around and just think out loud and it catches all my thoughts pretty close, right? Maybe I'll have to tweak it a bit and stuff like that. But all right. So I took some notes here, uh, pretty basic notes. Uh, maybe I'll take some more as we're making this video. So bear with me, it might be a long video, but I'll try to nail it down in terms of from a complete beginner, what kind of things you should think of. And I'll try to also make it in order of importance, right? Which, which you'll realize soon enough that, um, that what n normally people talk about the most important things to look at is actually a bit more down the line for me. All right, first thing, right off the bat okay the most important thing that you need to think about when choosing an industry is can you provide results for the industry okay so this kind this question can be as deep as the like really deep right it depends on how deep down the rabbit hole you want to go but if you have been watching for some time, you know that I like to be on the side of results-based, right? There's all kinds of agencies, there's activity-based, there's results-based, they're both successful business models. When you're, when you're starting on the results-based, you wanna shit on the other side, but the other side makes tens of millions and billions of dollars, right? You know, like there's huge agencies. In New York City, you walk in, there's agencies that they, they all they do is video, work, let's say, right? Like they just do like, um, um, you know, we're gonna do, edit videos or we're going to um, you know make logos right they charge like fifty thousand dollars for that kind of stuff right they're really good at what they do but they don't have a clear way to show that they bring results right like so i'm not i don't recommend going that direction especially if you're beginning because in my experience i didn't so i don't know what it's like to be in that way in my from when i see it from my side it seems like it'll be really hard to sell that right it seems like it's hard to sell something that you can't directly show is growing that growing that industry's business right so first thing i would like to point out is can you provide results for this business right what is it right people say this all the time but they don't elaborate on what this exactly means what like what is the actual product you're trying to sell what is your sales pitch 
right? When they, when they ask you like, so what are you going to be doing? What, what, what are you thinking? Like think that through. Okay. So I put a few things, content, are you going to provide content? Um, maps, Google Maps SEO. Like, you know, I, I still see some people doing SEO for local businesses and they don't do, they're do, do focusing on organic only, which I have no idea what the fuck they're doing, right? Like, what are you guys doing? Like, if you're doing just local SEO and you're not doing maps, like, um, anyways, it's a different rant. But anyways, Google Maps, all that stuff, you know, Maps is probably one of the most core things you're going to be offering, especially if you're working with local businesses. Are you going to be providing content? What kind of linking are you doing? Like, actually think about these stunts. Where are you going to get the power, right? The, the best way to answer this question, the clearest way to answer this question is, is if you have already had some experience in the industry, right? So that kind of goes against being a complete beginner, I know, but it's, it's in my experience, that's one of the most powerful things that happened for me, right? When I got into the phase of paper call, there was a period of time, if you watched my videos before, um, when I was only doing paper call, that skyrocketed my learning phase for actually delivering results. For, because for a period of time, I was all about, I'm gonna make the phone ring and then I'm gonna ask for money. Right. And that forced me to be able to rank shit way better, forced me to um, master AdWords to a certain degree so I can bring calls at a relatively dollar amount that people are not able to do, like especially roofers and shit. So that that helps. Right. If you if you have lead gen size, you already rank. That's a clear cut way. Like, holy shit, I took this thing from scratch. Now it's bringing calls. So I know that I can provide these results. I have the core product. OK, so. Choose, you know, if, if, if like, like if, if you're going to go that route, if you do, then obviously it's going to be easier and maybe you don't have to get that domain for your agency being all about that industry just yet. You can maybe tinker around a bit and know that, you know, whatever your core product is. So my core product is Google Maps um, is, is, is working. So that's number one. Can you provide results? OK. Number two is going to be a bit more into that the same same topic you know can you provide results but kind of thinking through what is it exactly your entire package is going to be what, what is the product what is your monthly retainer or even forget about multi retainer. what is going to be your main things you're going to be saying right and a lot of the stuff it can be kind of bundled together under the same umbrella for example okay one of the greatest products right now you can see every other day people are opening up this business left and right is reviews right review generating um, 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 platforms so like, like 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 apps right review like they they send messages to your clients via email or or um, um, you know text message right fantastic product they, they, they range from anywhere from 25 to 200 dollars a month some I see are like charging pretty high like 650 800 dollars a month I mean they're putting a few more stuff bells and whistles around it um, but the point is really great product if you can package one of those reseller or whatever along with google maps it's a pretty good like if you can rank in the industry bring calls and then you can help them drive reviews so they can you're growing their reputation it's it goes really well hand in hand because when homeowners find you in the three pack and then they see the business as the having the most reviews it's a clear-cut way that they're going to get they're going to get some of that calls right going more into it now you can start targeting the people who are going to actually visit the website what kind of website are you looking to make Right? These are simple questions, but you can you can think it through and it'll help you bring down what kind of industry. There's industries right now in the home services still where you can use template website, like templated websites, just copy and paste and change, you know, all their stuff and it'll be fine. It, it does just fine, you know, not duplicate content, but the framework can be templated, right? Depends. Industry matters in these things, from what I see at least. Um, but now I'm getting into the nitty gritty, right? Exactly. But Think these things through. Are you going to be providing content, right? If you work with um, higher level clients, um, uh, by higher level, I mean like maybe, uh, uh, I don't know, like high ticket, how do, how do I say for lack of better, better terms, maybe lawyers, dentists, the example I was getting into. These guys, a lot of times they want content. They understand like, you know, they want to have some recurring thing, blogging and stuff like that. Um, do you have the capacity to deliver that? A VA from the Philippines is not going to be able to write dentist content right off the bat content is one of the hard things to deliver in this industry if you want it to be very high quality are you going to offer that is it needed to get results right ask yourself all these things because it's going to um you know kind of shape out the industry for you and 
help you answer that question. Can I provide results for this industry? All right. So that's number one. Let me think through a little bit. Let's see if there's anything to be said there. I mean, I put linking and power, but that just depends on your, you know, again, what you're going to be doing, what you have in mind to deliver these results, right? Are you going to be a PBN network? Are you going to use some other kind of linking, whatever? Are you going to use links at all, right? I see industries right now emerging, not emerging, but, you know, I see people ranking with very high quality content in certain industries, right? I don't see much powerful links coming to them. They have a different strategy. Maybe they have writers. Maybe they have a high quality system in place um, that, that is being able to produce this kind of quality of writing at a cheap enough rate so they can charge. I don't have that. So I don't do that. Uh, my, my, my way of bringing results is different. It's, it's a bit more um, brute force, you could say, compared to that, right? It seems to me like content is a lot of work and um, building an entire agency around that part. But that's just my own opinion because I never did that, right? My thing, it seems a lot easier. Just rank Google Maps, get reviews, build out, you know, uh, convert all that shit, drive calls, and then that's it. You call it a day, right? So think that shit through. That's the number one thing you should be looking at. Number two is what others are doing. Oh, just this is just a note that one of the best ways to you know help you answer those questions that I just talked about is look at what other people are doing who are ranking. It's, it's pretty much in plain sight, right? Open up 10 tabs of top people who are ranking in competitive cities and look through those websites. Take some notes. What are they doing? What's going on? Use basic tools, Ahrefs, Majesty, whatever. If you're going to the LinkedIn route, what kind of power they have, right? Are you going to be able to replicate that with a decent enough budget, right? So while you're getting into this, you'll be getting more into the side about exactly what kind of product you're going to be offering, and that's going to be helping you exactly um, pin that down even more. Now, caution. One thing to mention, I'm not saying you have to be a great SEO and then you can only choose the niche. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that think these things through so you can have in your head what is it you'll be offering? Because soon enough, people are going to ask you anyways, right? Okay, so what do we get? Ooh, lay that out right now. It's going to be part of your sales presentation anyways. So goes hand in hand. All right. Number two, is there urgency to buy in the industry? Okay, this is going to be directly impacting the product, right? What kind of thing? Google Maps is very different dependent on um, what, what industry it is, right? Even Google Ads. Google itself, search, is quite different depending on the industry. People just label it local business, but it's very different. A plumber has way higher ratio, like searches to call ratio, than a bathroom remodeler. Somebody whose bathroom is clogged, right? Like, like they can't take a shit, and they're looking on Google, plumber near me, they're going to call that guy much more often and uh, at, at a less time needed. They're not going to go through and check 10 references for that guy and find out videos on YouTube and previous work they did. They're going to see the other most recent Google Maps and they're just going to call that guy. Compared to a bathroom remodeler, okay, local service, I mean, it's still the same industry, but way different. They're going to click on the website. They're going to check out their stuff. They're going to need to be sold on the dream of their renovation because it's a luxury. It's not just a need that they have right now. So it's very different, right? And I would urge you to think about this because, for example, like I just said, if, you're, if your core product is maps, you want to have usually some form of urgency, right? It, it does help. It doesn't have to be. But in my experience, it does help. Um, roofing is half and half. People who are looking for a roof repair, like, you know, if there's a storm and their roof is leaking, again, that's an emergency. So they will more likely to make those calls. If they are looking to make a replacement, the buyer journey could be a lot like a bathroom re uh, renovation. But still, it has more urgency, at least in the industry, right? You know, it's, it's set that if your roof's old and it's just, you know, time to get, get a new one, in my understanding, it's more of an urgent thing compared to, renovating your whole bathroom into a marble whatever right granite countertops and all that shit that's more of a luxury thing only in a way right so think about those things one of the easiest ways guys to to get this answer like within two hours is just talk to people right we are always calling and pitching right how about call and talk to them hey do you have a minute 
Uh, just wanted to, you know, I'm just a marketer um, who's looking into getting into, or don't say the word marketer, first sentence, but say, I'm looking to get into the industry. I just wanted to you know, ask you a few questions. I'm not trying to sell anything. Just wanted to know exactly uh, what kind of things that are working right now. Like I see someone guys at Home Advisor. just wanted to give an idea for if it's working. Go in with one of the common things in the industry and have a conversation. That's a way easier to get than somebody, um, you know, con convert them to a sale, obviously, right? So, and you'll have an easier time to do this if you're, if you're, if you're afraid on the phones, this is a very easy way to talk. You, you'll probably get somebody to talk to you on the 10th dial you make, right? People um, don't get that often. Nobody wants to call them up and discuss about this. So they might go into their own rant and stuff like that oftentimes, and, and you learn a lot. So that's just a side note there. Okay, so call them there. Okay, talk for 15 minutes, and then you write one word. So clearly, I'm not going to be taking notes in this call. <laughs> All right, is there urgency to buy? Lastly, average cost per job, okay? So this is, like I said, this is the most common thing people put out there, right? And it is one of the most important things, but it doesn't have to be how people put it. People put it that, okay, you can target a lawyer because one job of, of a big loss would make them $10,000. So you just getting them one job makes you, makes you worth it for the whole month. You see where after all this, the foundation I just laid in the last 15, 16 minutes, why, why this, that, the power of this, I don't know if that makes sense. Like it makes sense in my head. That's why I'm saying it like that. But does it kind of make sense why this is like third or fourth down the list? It's because results come first, right? After you know what you're going to be offering and all that stuff, if there's urgency to buy in their product and it sits well across the board in other products that are in the industry that they have to choose from, then you can talk about how much do they make. Generally speaking, in the home services, right? Like if you talk about roofers, bathroom remodelers, well, great one right now is solar companies. I'll actually talk about that in a second. Um, they make a ton of money. One job for a roofer, $10,000, $15,000, $10,000, $12,000, right? Um, for a roof replacement. Um, um, bathroom remodeling, I think it's even more, like 15 to 30 grand they make. Profit margins, I think a little bit lower. I think it's like, 20, 25% where a roofer is more like 30 to 40%. I mean, I have a, one or two clients who make 50%, but they are unbelievable salesmen, right? Like insane at selling. Um, so that's different. But the point is in calculation, it is true. It's a horrible sales pitch because that's, that's, that's what everybody and their mom is saying on the phones when they're pitching these guys, right? It's like, it's like the, it's like a roofer saying free estimates. It's just, saturated you calling people and saying that as your main thing like hey just one job from my service will get you know pay for the whole thing it's just horrible but reality is true once you once they once the campaign starts to roll one job in the month is going to pay for the entire campaign right unless you're charging more than i don't know like four thousand five thousand dollars they're probably going to be breaking profit with one good job right and that puts you at a place of power because it means that your product has to work not that hard, right? If, if you can provide results, um, and this is really where it comes in in confidence of providing the results, right? If you're, if you're good at this shit, you know, you should be call tracking. You should be nailing it down to like, like I'm delivering, I, I do call tracking for all my clients, right? Most of them that I can, unless, you know, some of the ones are big, they don't want to change the phone number. That's a different story, but I nail it. I hold them to the number of calls that are coming in, or at least the clicks and everything like that, because that way it makes my reporting a lot easier. I don't want to be in that activity side, right? So like talking about those industries a bit more um, that I mentioned in the beginning, activity-based businesses, they have to consistently report on something, right? Hey, every week we'll give you one blog post. Every month we'll give you um, one video on YouTube, something like that. Every month they'll have to do that, right? Which is fine, right? But I don't want to do that. I don't want to have that kind of reporting. I want to have my reporting um, I'll make a video about reporting because my reporting system changed and I think I found a sweet spot that works really well. So one second guys, reporting, maybe that'll be next week. All right, but average cost per job is going to dictate what they hold you to, right? Like for your service, for them to pay you monthly, what kind of thing they hold you to so they can be making money easily and not even like question. You know, if they're making anywhere from a 3x to 10x return, you're going to be fine, right? Profit I'm talking about. 
right? After their, after their job and everything, they have to be um, uh, making that kind of profit. So that's something to consider. If you do SEO for um, restaurants, let's say, right? Obviously this doesn't fly. You can't be like, hey, we're gonna get you one customer and we're gonna show you very clearly that we brought you that and then you're gonna be paying us thousand dollars per month. That's not gonna work, right? So a different kind of reporting has to come in place. You're gonna to have to show them that you raise their traffic, all kinds of stuff. In my experience, it's a little tougher, but then again, Maybe I'm biased because that's, this is all I know. I'm in the home services, right? So take my stuff with a grain of salt when I'm talking about other industries because I, I don't know that. In my experience, from what I see, it, it seems hard. Like if I'm going to restaurants and I want to charge them three grand per month, huh, what would I show these guys that I'm bringing? A roofer with some given time, I could show them like, hey, we brought you like, you know, 10 jobs this month. We brought you or, uh, uh, you know, 60 calls this month. 30 calls, even 20 calls. This one, that was good, solid calls. How much did you convert? I know I can have that conversation and they'll be like, okay, all right, okay, that's, that's, that's pretty good. But uh, for a restaurant, I'm not too sure, right? So average cost, that's where that comes in and that's why it's one of the most common things. So take that into account, obviously, as well, all right? Now, elaborating on average cost a bit and, and I will give you some solid examples because you know, that's what I like to do. With a recent industry, that I got is, is fantastic. Solar companies, okay? I think is um, one of the great niches to get into right now, just laying it out there. Um, there's so many, you know, there's bathrooms, kitchen remodeling, I'll choose one or the other, um, or both, you know, bathrooms and kitchens, um, it's great. You, they make a lot of money, they're, they're all seasoned, stuff like that. All have their ups and downs, okay? Let's elaborate real. how many minutes are we at? All right. Fuck it, it'll be a 30 minute video. Let's elaborate on it. Why not just go all the way so you guys know exactly what this is about. All right, what thing come in mind? Bathrooms versus roofing, right? Just so you know how I think. Okay, bathroom is all year round. So um, um, it's something that they can do in the North and the South, right? So you don't have to target people just on the South. Um, uh, you, you can do all over America because in the North, roofers take a break. Not to say that you can't get roofers in the north, but in the beginning, if you're getting businesses that are not big, you're gonna have some trouble in the winter, right? It's too, I made videos about this. It was, it took some time for me to establish that and my clients are paying me all throughout the year, right? Anyways, bathrooms, you won't have a problem because they can go in the bathroom even when it's snowing outside, right? Um, they make money, so they have the money to pay you, all that stuff, but there's certain things. A roofing business, generally speaking, can make like twelve thousand dollars. You know, let's say ten to twelve thousand dollars. They can do that roof in like three days, two days. I have a client who can do those size roofs in one day. They they just flood that roof up with like people, and then they're out by the evening, right? But the point is, that's the time frame they take. A bathroom could take as far as like a month, three weeks, four weeks, six weeks even, right? That changes the business model. It means that there's only a certain amount of Bathrooms they can do. If they're booked out, like if you start calling bathroom remodels, you'll realize after some time that they say like, oh yeah, we're booked till December. I'm like, what the fuck? This is like, this is August. What are you talking about? Right? They're booked till December. They're not looking for, they're not going to spend that kind of money on SEO and all that shit if they're booked out. You have to go for bigger companies. It changes the model. Now you're targeting franchise companies, you know, or, or that kind of level companies that are bigger, um, which is a little harder to penetrate, but I'm getting into the realm where I don't have experience because when it comes to franchises, I, I only targeted roofers before, as you know, and recently, if that, right? I'll elaborate, elaborate on that as well a bit. Fuck, man, there's so much to talk about. But um, you get what I'm talking about right here. Look at their business. This shit matters. It's not just keyword research, guys. It's not just uh, looking up, you know, like which one has search volume and stuff like that. Obviously, you want a market that has demand, that people are looking for that industry in Google. <laughs> Obviously, you want that. But it's not just about that. Look in their business. What is it that they have to do? What kind of close ratios do they have? Like, you know, it's going to now we're getting into the phase two, which is the ideal buyer. Um, but, but that being said, that's just the comparisons I'll be giving at for roof versus bathroom. Let's talk about solar. A couple of months ago, when I did the email blast, I got two clients. Um, one of them was a solar company. They were sort of a pain in the ass in the beginning, asking me questions. These guys were calling me, you know, every week, like, hey, what are you doing? Is this really, are you going to be fixing this stuff like that? I'm like, yeah, things are, you know, don't worry, things are coming. We're doing on page right now. They didn't even be able to see we're going to be doing this. They didn't really get into stuff like that. And they were, you know, being like really back and forth with me. I'm like, all right, I get the game. I know in the beginning they're like that a bit more. So I'm going with it. 
after some time, uh, I think after like the second month or two months, they, they just completely stopped talking, right? It's like we passed like two more months. I didn't hear anything from them at all whatsoever. So I was like, what the fuck is going on? Are they going to like, if, they, if there's a sudden drop like that, like if they're talking a lot and then they completely shut up and like, let's say two more, two or more payments come in and we haven't spoken at all. I started thinking like, hmm, I wonder what's up. So I reached out to them like, hey, how, thing, how, are, how are things going guys? Just wanted to let you guys know that, you know, this thing came in. Uh, you guys are on Google, uh, Google uh, uh, News or something, you know, I did a press release. They were on Google News, wanted to show them some stuff. And they're like, they, they, then they, you know, they called me, right? And we had a conversation and they're like, yeah, you know, we've been really busy. Uh, we, we actually just closed several, several deals in the last, um, you know, couple of weeks or something like that. And I know from the beginning that their average job was 25,000 for solar. So I thought like, okay, fuck, that's why they shut up because they're, they're making so much money from this. So hence I started to look in solar now, right? If you look in solar, these guys make, and you from 20 to, they make, their average job is big, right? But going back into the thing, it's not something that it, it, as urgent as roof, right? Solar is, generally speaking, more uh, still like a luxury item. I think, I, I still don't know it as well, right? Um, there's big players in the industry, which is um, changing the um, buyer mindset. I don't know what to call that thing, you know, like what homeowners think about it, right? Like these things are changed by trends. Like Elon Musk is a big, uh, like whatever he says, it's a big, like, you know, it spins the market, right? If he says like, this is the future, people, homeowners who are, you know, at a, at a certain level of wealth and stuff like that, they're like, yes, that is the future. I want to turn into solar now, you know? Like that kind of shit matters. You can look at the industry and this kind of stuff, like what kind of people think and delve down to see where that urgency metric you'd put out of one to 10. Hope I'm making sense. But the point is, it's probably not as urgent yet as getting a, your roof repaired or replaced but it's not as far as um, replacing your bathrooms. It's more into a certain type of demographic. It's probably one that Facebook ads would work better compared to like Facebook ads in roofing versus Facebook ads in solar. Solar would probably be better because it has culture behind it. There's a certain type of homeowner who sees themselves as green energy and, and uh, renewable bullshit. So, I mean, not to be, <laughs> it's good to be renewable guys. But you know, like, like that's the mindset they come from so they, they can be sold at, right? Again, these kind of things you can think about. If you're in solar and if you're going completely into it, a good product would be Facebook ads to complement this. It's a good upsell, at least better one than roofing, right? It's on my list this winter to get into Facebook ads, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Think about these things because it's gonna change your package. It's gonna change your upsells. So that's, you know, like a freebie right there that I wanted to point out to you guys. It's a, I think it's a great, great industry that's coming in um, in the future if I was to, you know, after, I don't know how many years it'll take for me to be number one, um, something I'd like to really be in the roofing industry, you know, publicly sort of, like a mini celebrity known, then I might think about, if I had to think about some other comp, you know, to go into, it might be sold. <sighs> All right, 28 minutes. I got two minutes to go into um, phase two. I don't know if I'm gonna do it. Let's see what it says. Can't wait for leads. Um, can't wait for leads. WordPress located. So phase two is your ideal buyer, which is once you're choosing the niche and you're getting into it, finding out within that niche, sub niche into that, right? This is something I, I have a, like a pretty long list of things that I look at when I'm looking at roofing business. I just, you can't, after a certain point, you can't just roll, you know, go with anybody who's willing to pay, right? It just doesn't work. One of the things is, can they wait, right? Are they established enough? Do they already have some kind of base that they can comfortably wait for the results to come in? I, I don't want people who's gonna be second week in asking for like, hey, is it working yet, right? I don't, it doesn't matter if they're established, they, have like, they don't have to have like, like, you know, like, like a brand and all that stuff set in. They could be, even be on Home Advisor, but are, are they doing good in Home Advisor, right? Like they might hate it there, okay, but can they hang on? Are they gonna start paying me and turning everything up? No. Are they on WordPress? Obviously, that's something I can clearly change, whatever they are, but I bring them there. But it is still one of the things, right? Like, I, if they are on WordPress, I, I, it's, it's a good sign for me, right? Because it's easier. I don't have to change them or sell them on a website or better yet, sometimes I'll give them the free website if they don't want to be sold on a website because I don't want to change my systems for my VA and stuff um, uh, for whatever they're on, right? That's, that's a thing that like my ideal buyer, one of the things is <laughs> they have to be on WordPress. But it's, it shouldn't really be on this list. It's because it's in the product side, but I just put it in there. Um, 
located in the main, main city, this is something I look at you know, quite recently right now. If I'm targeting certain cities, I want to go in because I know those cities are going to be good for my, my target market. Um, are they located there? Do they have a brand already established there? It's not needed, but if we're going to open a brand new Google My Business listing in a very competitive city, like they need to know this is going to take time compared to if they already have, they're located, that they have reviews there, that the crew there, everything, they're in home base. It's gonna make it easier to deliver those results. These are going into, you, it's not really ideal buyer. I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, kind of twisting the definition of it, but ideal buyer revolves around the idea of what kind of stage they are in that industry, right? It's more towards how much are they making per year for, uh, and that, that you're gonna target. I'll end with the franchise model. Not to what about like a couple of weeks ago, I made that video that I'm going to be targeting franchises because I wanted to get big dollar accounts to coming in. Very quick, I realized that it's not as good as it sounds, right? Let's go like this. It sounds really good on the books. Like, hey, I just closing big deals, right? Let's say like you get a roofer. Let's say you get a home service in your target market um, who has like 50 locations. One, it's, it's not easy to penetrate, penetrate. It's not easy to get into that um, uh, business to, to, to sell them, right? You have to make multiple calls. It's, 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 there's an you know, art to that shit. Um, and once you do get in, if they're big enough, they're going to try to lowball you. That's what I realized, right? Big, big companies lowball their services. This is what they do. You look at McDonald's. How much do you think they pay per patty or some shit? I bet you it's the lowest in the market. I bet you they can undercut anybody else out there per patty and then they know the numbers really well because they are that big they're so big and then they know their scale so well that they will each and every part of that sector they know their numbers and they will squeeze everything out because they are able to do so right i don't want that i don't want a roofer with who has a location in every state in the country and then telling me like all right so we're gonna do like 50 locations and we're gonna give you like you know something like whatever and it's gonna when i do the math it's like down to 350 bucks per location. I'm like, fuck that, right? I, I, can get, I can get better by targeting the big fish in a small pond and charging 3K, 2,500, whatever, right? And be at a better pace. These things matter. This is, this is in phase two, but understand that not everything that people talk about is as good as, as it sounds. Before I got into the franchise, I'm like, holy shit, if I get one, loca one business and they have like 15 locations, uh, that, that's... that's uh, it's gonna make, you know, like that's like 15 sales in one time. Not so much, because usually they're gonna to try to low volume. Now, having that said, there is sweet spots though. There's a difference between 50 locations and maybe like five to seven locations. A guy who is, you know, like, like on emerging and he's like rapidly growing, and you have like let's say five to seven locations along the east side, you could get him for 10, 15K a month for those locations and each would be about $1,200 to $1,500 or whatever, you know, something or a good price range that you can work with. That would be fantastic, right? So that's ending with a little bit of a weaker point, I think, because I'll probably lose some of you guys here because you're not, you know, done with this part. But don't get too lost into thinking um, of you know, the common things people are saying out. Go through the steps of um, what is exactly reality it, what what exactly working out there, right? What is this, your target market going through? What, what what kind of money do they make? What kind of jobs do they close? What's the buyer uh, urgency in their market? And what product can you provide that will be very solid? And it's very easy for you to say that, look, this is why I exist in your life. And this is why I charge this. <sighs> All right, guys. Hope that helps. Peace.